hello everyone so in this lecture we are going to discuss about the very basic things that you need to learn before you come to digital electronics hardware lab so let's proceed first of all we need to understand what is digital logic ic in theory you have already learned about different kinds of logic gates which we use to implement different kind of logic circuits right but in practical situations obviously we are going to use this kind of digital logic IC or integrated circuit to implement the logic circuits so here as an example you can see we have an OR gate to implement that we are going to use this kind of logic IC uh, 7432 logic IC this is the pin diagram for that logic IC and as you can see each of this logic IC contains several logic gates of similar type uh, so here we have four OR gates in one 7432 logic IC so this is what digital logic IC is then we need to discuss about the particular types of IC we are going to use in our laboratory which is 7400 series IC these types of ICs were first introduced in 1966 and then fully commercialized in 1972 uh, so as you can see this is a very old technology but still we need to understand and study about it because to understand the very basics of digital electronics we have to know about the very basic logic ICs there is also another technology which is called 4000 series but if you go to market right now and try to buy logic IC then probably you are going to get this 7400 series because this is quite more available than the 4000 IC that's why we are going to keep our discussion limited to this 7400 series ICs okay first thing for any technology of IC to understand is their logic level okay for logic ICs uh, we have we know that we have two, two standard logic levels one is 5 volt and another one is 0 volt for 7400 series 5 volt denotes logic 1 or high 0 volt denotes your logic logic 0 and another thing that I probably discussed earlier is that each of this IC contains multiple gates of similar kind that means if you look for this uh, IC here which is a quad NAND gate it contains four NAND gates inside of it okay and in this table you can see uh, commonly used logic gate ICs and their descriptions like let's say for example uh, 7402 IC this is quad 2 input NOR gate what this quad and two input means quad means if you look at this diagram here this is that uh, 7402 IC right it contains four NOR gates and also each of the NOR gates have two inputs that's why quad two input NOR gate IC so these are the common types of gates and their particular uh, logic ICs So next we are going to discuss about the very basics of how to use logic ICs first of all identifying the pins of an IC okay so here you can see as an example we have 7432 logic IC we also have something written as LS here we are going to discuss about that later on but this 7432 IC if you search that on the internet you are going to get this kind of pin diagram right and inside of it you are going to understand everything that is embedded on the ic but how to understand which pin is pin 1 and which pin is pin 2 to understand that in this ic we have some indicators like this one here this half circle here or this circle here if you find this half circle or this circle in the IC from that to the left here this one is your pin 1 okay then this is pin 2 pin 3 like this so from pin 1 up to pin 7 like this then keep counting from there to here 
then from 8 to 9 up to 14 so in this way pin numbers are denoted then we can understand which pin means what for some of the ICs you are, you are going to get this kind of half circle but maybe this circle won't be there for some of the ICs the circle will be there but the not the half circle so whichever is present you can understand from there to left this is pin number one okay and another very important thing is after you understand all the pin numbers in a given IC then this pin number 14 this is for VCC or powering it up and this pin number 7 is for ground for most of the ICs okay so we have to provide plus 5 volt in the VCC and ground to our ground pin so that our logic IC may work okay the next important thing is to know how to place the IC on a breadboard uh, so here you can see if you place the IC in a breadboard like this this is very wrong because we already know from our previous knowledge that in a breadboard horizontally these lines are connected like this okay so in this way so if you place your logic IC here like this that means this pin here and this pin here are connected right now also these two also these two this is very wrong so what we need to do is place our IC like this this divider here this is actually separating this portion from this portion okay so if we place our logic IC like this that means this pin is not connected with this one right now or this one is not connected with this one so always we have to be very careful about this one so that we don't place our IC like this now we are going to see an example circuit here you can see a very simple circuit and I'm going to show you how to implement that step by step using logic ICs so here you can see a very simple circuit with only two AND gate and one OR gate so first we need to figure out what are the types of logic ICs we need for this implementation uh, for AND gates we need 7408 IC right and each of these ICs contain four AND gate so one AND gate will be enough for our implementation and for OR gate we need 7432 IC so these also contain four or gate we need only one so one 7408 one 7432 IC that we are going to need in our implementation so next uh, we are going to place our ICs on the breadboard I am assuming that you have properly placed the two ICs on the breadboard right so then what we need to do is we can just give each of these ICs some name like let's say the first IC is ICA and this one is ICB we can write the same names in our gates too like these two N gates here will be implemented by this one so we can write A here A here similarly for the OR gate B because we are going to use this IC okay then then we can implement the input pins and output pins for our ICs so let's implement this one we have two inputs P and Q we have to use one AND gate so let's say we are using this AND gate here so the pin numbers are 13 and 12 so for 13 we can connect the P input for 12 we are connecting Q input okay so uh, as this gate is used and pin number is 13 and 12 we can write here 13 and here 12 I will tell you later on why am I doing this so pin 11 is your output right so we can write 11 here okay so then let's move on to the next and gate this one the inputs are R and S right 
so let's assume that we are using this gate for this one so the pin numbers the input pin numbers are 10 and 9 so for 10 the input is r and for s we are taking pin number 9 so we can write here 10 and here 9 then uh, the output pin here is pin 8 we can see so we can write pin 8 so these are the two outputs these two outputs here are going to the inputs of the next or gate so let's choose one or gate from this one the next ic so let's assume we are using this or gate so pin numbers are one and two so we should connect it like this from 11 to 1 and from 8 to 2 like this we are connecting so in the figure we can write here like 1 and the next one is your 2 okay then the output will come from 3 here and 3 is our output y so here we can write three so when you are implementing the circuit in the piece of paper where you have drawn your circuit you should do something like this like pointing out the pin numbers and the IC numbers something like this this will help you a lot when you are debugging the circuit uh, because um, you know when we implement a circuit there will be a lot of I uh, logic ICs and it's highly unlikely that you are going to do everything right so obviously most of the time you are going to face some problem there will be some problem with connecting the circuit or power levels or anything so then this diagram here will help you a lot to debug the circuit where you have connected anything wrong you are going to find out very easily that's why i am showing you this uh, process so that you can debug your circuit easily Okay, so then what? Then we need to give the power to the ICs. So we know that pin 14 is for giving plus 5 volt and pin 7 is for giving ground. So for each of the ICs we have to do this giving the plus 5 volt and ground. Otherwise our circuit won't work. So this is how you can implement a logic circuit using logic gates. So let's say you have implemented your circuit and when you power it up something is wrong. You are not getting the proper output. How to debug that? To debug that the first step is to check for the pin 14 and pin 7. Check whether you have given the proper voltages there or not. Pin 14 should get 5 volt for powering up and pin 7 should get ground or zero volt for each of the logic ic check that and ensure each of these ic's are getting the proper voltage that is needed then the next thing that you can do is check your circuit connections whether everything is right or not the last thing that you can do is bring a multimeter let's say this is our multimeter okay then for the multimeters black probe connect it with pin number 7 or our ground pin or any ground in the circuit connect the black wire with that then the red pin the red wire use it to check the voltages in each pin let's say we are trying to check whether our pin 13 is getting proper voltage or not okay so we can check that like this for each of the pin check the voltages and uh, validate with your theoretical result whether it's getting the proper voltage or not in this way you are going to uh, debug the circuit properly 
so now we are going to discuss about some further details which are not that necessary for your lab experiments right now but will be very helpful in the later time when you do your project first i am going to discuss about 7400 series logic families so what is logic family logic family means a group of logic ic's which follow a similar kind of design architectures because of that they have their own set of characteristics their advantages and disadvantages uh, in 7400 series we have two major types of logic family one is ttl uh, which is transistor transistor logic okay this is based on your uh, bipolar junction transistor another one is cmos or complementary metal oxide semiconductor this is based on your mosfets so each of these families have several sub families each having its own distinct set of uh, characteristics because of their architectures so in the right you can see several sub families for the ttl family and also for cmos and these are the code names that are used in their part numbers right so uh, if you look closely you will see that i have uh, given blue colors to this particular sub families one is this low power short key ttl uh, code name is ls another one is high speed cmos code name hc this is because uh, in general nowadays if you go to the market the most popular sub families that you are going to get are these two ls and hc and probably you are going to use one of these two in your lab that's why i have given these two code names more importance and i am going to discuss about lot about them later on in this lecture um then let's learn how to recognize 7400 series ic part number previously we have seen that these kinds of part numbers were written in our logic ic's so to understand that first of all let's um discuss the middle portion here 74 ls 32 what that means this 74 here means the particular grade uh, 74 for commercial grade uh, 54 for military grade and 75 for interface device then the next portion here this is the sub family type so here it's written ls ls means low power short key this is the sub family for this logic ic then the next portion here this is the function that means uh, here it is written here 32 32 a is uh, or gets right so that's why uh, if it was written here 08 then obviously it would have been and gets then let's discuss about this sn here and this n here so this portion here means the particular manufacturers who have manufactured this ic so sn means texas instrument they have built this device and the last portion is the suffix which is the particular package for this ic so n means plastic dual inline package there are different kinds of packages and different kind of manufacturers for each of these uh, devices okay then uh, ttl and cmos logic voltage levels we are going to discuss about this now first of all let's understand what is logic voltage levels uh, for each of the ic's there are uh, some acceptable levels of voltage for inputs and also for outputs uh, for example let's say for this ttl uh, logic levels we can see that for inputs here logic high means if you give as input from 5 volt to 2 volt this range here this is acceptable for logic high and from 0.8 to 0 volt is acceptable for logic low so if you give some kind of voltage as input let's say 1.5 volt then obviously the logic ic won't recognize that that's the problem this portion here this is actually undefined portion okay if you give some values around that voltage that condition is called floating or undefined state 
so we always have to ensure that we are giving voltages within this range that means 5 volt to 2 volt for high and 0.8 to 0 volt for low and for output also we have some specifics uh, that is dependent upon the architecture of the family so uh, ttl logic says that the output should be 5 volt to 2.7 volt actually we don't control that uh, the particular logic i see inside uh, inside that the architecture controls that voltage so whenever we give a particular permitted voltage as input then we are going to get this permitted output voltage so for ttl logic the permitted voltage for the architecture is 5 volt to 2.7 volt for logic high and 0.5 to 0 volt for logic low so that means our ttl architecture will ensure that output stays within this range for logic high and this range for logic low but this logic level voltage is very different for cmos family right um so for cmos family we have uh for input obviously for input here we can give 5 volt to 3.5 volt to denote logic high and 1.5 to 0 volt for logic low or logic zero so this portion here this is unacceptable range we cannot give any voltage within the range of 3.5 volt to 1.5 volt okay as input for outputs uh, the cmos architectures permits that the output should be something like this for high the range is 5 to 4.95 so very accurate right for logic zero also we have 0 0.05 to 0 volt as output so you see very close margin that means our uh, CMOS architecture is very accurate in its output right as you can see there is some clear distinctions between the TTL logic and CMOS logic levels now because of that obviously these two types has its own advantages and disadvantages let's say for example uh, this ls family they are obviously faster because they are based on bipolar junction transistor but they requires more power as bipolar junction transistors requires more power draws more current okay and hc this kind of ic's are a bit slower not that much slower but uh, in frequency if you compare obviously they are a bit slower compared to ls but requires less power because they are based on mosfets okay so this is the uh, clear difference between these two so which one to choose when you are trying to design a project using logic ICs? which one should you choose uh, this depends on your applications I will suggest that um, for your project uh, you don't need that much high frequency to operate so you don't need faster IC uh, AC will suffice no problem but when you use 30 or 40 integrated circuits together in a single project obviously that will require a lot of power that's why i would suggest that you always try to use hc ic's in your project but again uh, in general what i have seen is that uh, traditionally hc ic's are more costly than the ls versions so uh, you have to choose yourself which one suits you better uh, dependent upon your application then next uh, combining ttl and cmos ic's what that means is basically whenever you are doing a project you are going to use a lot of ic maybe 30 or 40 uh, 
there if you intermix between these two types ls and hcic's there might be some problems okay so i am going to discuss that now so as we have already seen the logic levels for input and output for both ls and hc are very different let's look at a possible situations let's say we have these two ic's in our design okay one is ls ic another one is hc and one output from our ls ic is going as the input to the next ic okay so what will happen then as this is ls ic the output can drop as low as 2.7 volt right as we can see the acceptable output voltage level is 5 volt to 2.7 volt that means the architecture permits an ls ic to give output voltage as low as 2.7 volt let's say for example uh, we are getting logic high here our circuit is giving logic high here so because of that situation we are getting 3 volt from the output from this ls ic so this 3 volt will go as input to the next ic here right 3 volt so what will happen as this ic is hc version of the ic the acceptable voltage as input is 5 volt to 3.5 volt so as it's getting 3 volt here obviously it won't recognize the input it will consider it as floating or undefined state you see the problem that's why it's not very good idea to intermix between uh, ttl and cmos ic in a same circuit still most of the time it doesn't uh, do any kind of problem because uh, most of the time the output voltage won't go as low as 3 volt maybe most of the time it will be around 4.2 volt 4.3 volt as i have seen for the ls ic and for hc ic the output stays very close to 5 volt always because they are very accurate the hc ic's so this is one thing to consider when you are doing your project okay the next one is pull up and pull down resistors um, so what are pull up and pull down resistors to understand that uh, let me give you an example let's say you want to design an input switch for this pin number one okay so how can you do that obviously switch means uh, we have to design something that can give 5 volt and 0 volt as input whenever whichever is needed so one idea is that you can just use this switch like this here then uh, connect it with the plus 5 volt here so that means whenever the switch is closed then this pin 1 is going to get plus 5 volt or logic high and the, when this is turned off the switch is turned off or uh, opened at that moment we are going to get logic 0 uh, so initially that could be our understanding but you see what's the problem with this one is when we are saying that when the switch is opened we are getting logic zero that's not quite right because we are not getting any voltage here this is totally disconnected right nothing is connected with our pin one when we are disconnecting the switch that means it is getting a floating condition we are saying that this is a floating or undefined conditions to give it a proper logic zero we have to connect it with the ground so how to do that the next idea could be like this let's say we are gonna connect a ground simply like this one so ground is connected that means right now when the switch is opened it's getting logic zero because of the ground and when we are closing the switch at that moment it's going to get logic one or plus five volt uh, one problem there is that when you are connecting the switch 
or when you are closing the switch at that moment let's say it's closed at that moment no resistor is available in this path that means a huge amount of current will flow through this path and the device will get damaged or your switch will get damaged this is obviously not what we want for that we need a different kind of solution what could be that solution that solution could be a resistor here we have just used a resistor here so that whenever we close this switch at that moment huge amount of current is not flowing so for this condition uh, if we again demonstrate this uh, logic 1 and logic 0 condition when our switch is opened at that moment our pin 1 is directly connected with the ground through this resistor that means we are gonna get logic 0 at that moment and then when we have this circuit closed at that moment obviously this plus 5 volt is directly connected to our pin 1 that means we are going to get logic 1 in this way we can design a switch and this particular resistor here this one is called pull down resistor because it is pulling the input pin directly to our ground okay so the default condition when the switch is opened is logic 0 because of this resistor because it's pulling down to ground then what will be our pull up resistor that will be something like this then the default condition is logic high because now the circuit is or the switch is opened and because of that this 5 volt through this resistor is connected directly to our pin 1 so it's getting logic 1 or high and then when we close this switch here then this ground is directly connected to our pin 1 that means we are gonna get logic 0 so this is pull up resistor so that is all for the lecture i hope everything was clear to you thank you